Aku baca aku. Eh, que se inicie la el streaming. Porque Damián estaba esperando un mensaje de Osvaldo. Y ha sido como. No se lo he mandado, yo le he dicho que, le, eh, que de parte de Osvaldo. Ok. We are, live now, uh, now, we are now in life. So, could you start, please? I start saying something that's nice. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, thank you for being here again. I will try to speak. My voice is getting worse. What I wanted to say is that last years, what happened in Ixa is that we have the custom that the program committee asked a suggestion uh, for a keynote speaker to the local committee. Okay. Now I would like to start a tradition where the local keynote is also a person of the receiving university, because each university, each school has some subjects and persons that lead project and teams, and they are good at. Now the same is the case for us. We have several subjects we are good at. And one of the subjects we are good at, perhaps the best, <clears throat> is that of cybersecurity. Now, we were not only aware, uh, I think as persons, we became aware that it's not only a matter of banking and this type of stuff, but also when the war started, we became very aware uh, that there can be a big influence on social networks. Now, successful people with high impact factors at the local school and international acknowledgement, they are not always appreciated in their own school. And I think that this is an exception. I think that Javier is appreciated a lot, is highly appreciated due to his personality. We're going to notice soon. So apart from being famous, he's very friendly and open and prepared to share the beauty of life with anyone. A bit in contrast with the typical idea we have of the computer scientist locking up in the office with his uh, squared, or no, ba basically t-shirt, no? Starting his overleaf to, to write his new paper, no? That means, as you hear, I'm full of admiration of uh, what Javier uh, achieved, apart from being famous. Now, I'm not going to read the CV, because you can read that and would spend half an hour more. But uh, to say the things I admire is that he managed to get projects running and to give him a practical impact in the world. Moreover, he managed to get international cooperation so it's not only local stuff and taking the lead in international societies, being the, the boss everywhere. The problem of being nice is that uh, you do not have a, a lot of time for anything and you work day and night. And the rectorate, moreover, convinced him to take a leading role as vice rector which makes management tasks even more hard. So I'm very grateful to you, Javier, that you could find the time to give us at least a faint idea, a flavor of the challenges in cybersecurity. Thank you. I give the word to Javier. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Um, so first of all, uh, good afternoon. Hello everyone, uh, I'm really pleased to be here as a keynote speaker. I appreciate very much the kind invitation from the organizers, and especially from Nima and Nikis. Because I appreciate very much a very kind introduction. You were extremely kind to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, let's start now the, the presentation. So I would like to talk to you today about digital twins. As you know, it's a technology that uh, has been uh, around within the last years and uh, is becoming very popular. And uh, together with uh, Professor Christina Alcaraz, also a member of my research group here at the University of Malaga, 
we uh, started uh, a research regarding how uh, was the cybersecurity problem in the area of digital twin. And uh, the outcome was a, a long paper that we just published one month ago in the Asia Police uh, Surveys and Tutorial. So you can find the whole paper there. And um, this, what I want to explain you today is with the, the main outcomes of, uh, of this research that we have been doing for a like, couple of years. So, uh, this is uh, the structure of the, of the presentation. Uh, after a brief introduction about the digital twins technology, for those who are not familiar, we will go into uh, the details of what are the concepts of digital twin spaces, designs, and architectures. We, of course, are uh, used to. Um, uh, here and, and learn about the science and architecture. There is a special concept called digital field spaces that is very important uh, in the area of digital field, not only for cybersecurity. And then we'll go through the functional layers and operational requirements of this technology uh, who, are, who have uh, a direct influence in the cybersecurity issues, as I will explain later. Then we will go into the details of cybersecurity sets and some um, cybersecurity recommendations that we have been exploring uh, in order to, let's say, enhance the situation of insecurity that we have uh, uh, nowadays for, for digital tools. Uh, it's a situation for uh, insecurity. It's just because we need to put more effort in research on that, on that area, but not because the problems cannot be solved, as I will show you later. So uh, let's start with the introductory section. Um, You will know that one of the main aims of Industry 4.0 since years ago uh, is to incorporate information technologies into everything that is related to the automation, production, distribution of products and services. So in, in, in within this aim, the digital twin is one of the most prominent technologies during the last year. Um, uh, but however, it's not a new concept. Uh, there is a new vision, but most, it's not a new concept. The concept of digital twin was more or less coined by in the, in the, in the 70s by, by NASA uh, when they tried to uh, monitor the physical components of other space missions because they, they needed to um, test uh, the test environments before and provide uh, proven solutions to, to, to their, to their uh, systems. Uh, but the, that kind of simulation that was done by NASA at the beginning of the 70s is far from the concept of digital twin uh, or the vision of digital twin that we have uh, nowadays. Actually, the most actual vision of, of digital twin was introduced in 2014 by Michael Greaves, who is now the head of digital twin laboratories in the in, uh, US. Uh, and um, although there was not a specific definition from that work in 2014, is when we have started to see definitions of what the digital twin is. And uh, I have, uh, Put here a number of uh, um, different definitions that we have been able to, to find in the, in the literature, not only the scientific literature, but also in the literature from, in the literature from companies uh, and from institutions, from European institutions. So, as you see, there are many definitions, but uh, probably I would like to highlight the keywords uh, in those uh, um, definitions so that you get a first uh, view a more direct view of what the digital thing is about. So it's about computer computerized model, virtual representation, simulation, emulation, mirroring, more models, uh, virtual, uh, virtual uh, machines. Um, from this uh, definition, I, I, I think I like more the second and the third one. I think they are like more um, precise. Uh, or at least it's a lot easier to, to understand. Okay, virtual representation of your world entities and processes synchronized to specific representation of reality, and then the grouping of machine, physical or virtual, of computer-based models called simulation, uh, emulation, mirroring, etc. Okay, so from from these uh, um, definitions, we can more or less infer. Uh, we don't need a specific or precise definition of uh, digital thing, but just to get an idea. Um, in summary, what we can say is that the purpose of uh, digital twin is to characterize physical assets of the real world, but by using digital assets and uh, using additionally a specification based technologies, models, either mathematical models, artificial intelligence models, optical models, and application program interfaces. So these uh, uh, elements are running on servers or on virtualized resources, virtual, virtual machines, 
for example, containers with the networks, and the objective of characterizing these physical assets is just to try to anticipate what kind of problems we are going to find. Okay, so. Um, you may think initially that it's not that far from the definition of uh, what simulation is, but it's something more than just simulation, I'll okay, show you later. Okay. Um, it has been uh, a quite a simple technology because, believe it or not, we have found uh, in a high number of uh, uh, use cases, I would say success stories in the in private company, the private industry, like those listed there. So you can find here a different kind of industry, oil and gas, uh, water, electrical, uh, automotive, healthcare, etc. And for each of them, a number of specific use cases for that uh, type of uh, industry. Um, it's not only that we have success stories, it is also that uh, uh, according to the, to the uh, reports uh, by Gartner, since 2018, uh, digital twins has been among the top 10 uh, technologies, uh, uh, technologies in industry. And moreover, there are market studies that say that in 2020, uh, the business around this technology was uh, 3.1 billion, but it's expected it will increase to 28 billion in 2026. Okay? So this gives us more or less an idea of what's the relevance of this technology. And why we should put some uh, uh, effort in and, and focus on, on developing it from the research point of view, okay? Because clearly, from the industry point of view, there are already these uh, success stories uh, that are already working outside there. So, after this introduction, I would like to show you uh, some, um, let's say, clinical concepts that uh, we need to take into account um, when researching about digital things. Regardless is for cybersecurity or not, but they are especially important for cybersecurity in the cybersecurity area. So, uh, according to the uh, new vision of digital twins that was given by, in 2014 by Michael Chris, uh, he um, showed in that in that actually the, this uh, idea from him was given in a course, not in a paper. It was on a, on a course on product life uh, life cycle management. Okay. And in this, uh, in this course, uh, he uh, observed that uh, everything related to digital twins could be, could be um, uh, let's say, uh, divided into spaces, uh, starting with a physical space, that is, uh, uh, where all the sensor devices, the actuators and the controllers, uh, PLCs, RPUs, et cetera, are located. Okay, this is what we want to characterize, as we saw before. Uh, extracting from the definitions of digital things. So, what we consider physical space? For example, let's let's let's, let's consider this is a, a turbine uh, from an aircraft, okay, where we have uh, multiple types of sensors, pressure, temperature, position, speed, etc. So this is the, the physical space, and um, this is how we try to represent the physical space. So we have a kind of a, a number of physical assets. And each of the physical assets internally has an input, an output, and it has functional units for configurations, for conditions, etc. Um, so this is the first of the spaces. The second one is what uh, Michael Christ uh, uh, called the digital space. And this is the digital assets that are representing the physical assets that we have seen before. Okay? Of course, simulation is involved, but not only simulation. And the idea is that the digital in the digital space, we can take decisions regarding how the physical space should react in case there is something malfunctioning or in the case of security, in case there is an attack. And uh, this could be uh, uh, the, this kind of simulation of the, of the digital asset, the turbine that we have seen uh, before. And so in the planes we have here, also, I mean, we have two planes, the physical space, the digital space, and in the digital space, we also have digital assets. And each of the digital assets, uh, um, besides the input and the, and the output, internally, we can see all the logical um, um, elements that we need in order to uh, bring the physical world to the digital world. So we have, still we have configurations, states, conditions, and we have the application program interfaces, 
at the models, at the mathematical models, the artificial models, etc. We have everything there concentrated. But you see, we have like two spaces and they are not connected. And this is what uh, Greaves uh, thought about. He said, well, well, we need to define a third space. And that third space is the communication space. And this is the, the one that connects both the physical and the, and the digital. Uh, um, is the way with by using this communication space is the way how uh, the digital space learn what is happening in the physical space, but at the same time can provide commands and order to the physical space to react to attacks or to malfunctions. And actually, in the this is what the last part, uh, the middle part in, in this uh, in this picture, what we create is a digital threat. Okay, and this is that this is starting to be different from the traditional simulators. This traditional, uh, this, this uh, digital thread is make, oh, start to make the difference. Um, actually, the most important thing or the most important uh, feature of, of the um, digital things is precisely that those bidirectional interfaces. Um, in the case of the previous example, we have, uh, we have seen how the digital twin resists, resists information from its physical counterpart how it analyzes information, and then how it establishes a configuration and sends it to the, to the physical part. This is represented in the, in the picture. This, those, those three, those three uh, steps are shown exactly there, okay? Um, so you see this, this uh, bidirectional interfaces, the digital thread is what's making the difference with the, with the simulators. Uh, that's why I have put on the top the DT versus simulator. But still, in order to have a more clear idea of the differences, uh, I, I show there what in the literature have been defined like the, the three um, um, variants of mirroring systems. We have the digital model, digital shadow, and digital tree. And you can observe uh, uh, that we have, of course, the physical assets and digital assets in both in the, in the three of them. But in the in the in the uh, middle of the boxes, you can see if this is manual connection. This uh, one-way communication uh, on automatic, or this both automatic in both cases. This is precisely the last, the last example, the, the digital twin. So in this picture, in this picture, you can see better what the difference between the digital twin and other kind of simulations. Okay. Um, so now we have clear that uh, digital twins are not simulation simulators anymore. It's something, something else than that. Uh, but obviously, uh, we can find uh, in the real world different uh, digital twin designs. And uh, we can find designs from a, a simple uh, digital twin composed of, of a server uh, running, of, uh, of the, I mean, the resources uh, running on the server, something like this. Okay. You have here the, the physical space with the sensors and the, and the, and the digital space. But we can, we can have designs that are a little bit more complex and supported by, for example, the cloud. You can see here in this sample, in the, in the top part, you can see the cloud. And this means that the digital twin can be designed so that all the internal operation is not done uh, uh, in the virtual um, machines in the local server, but are out, uh, offloaded to the, to the cloud, okay? So we have these different um, um, uh, complexities in the, in the design of the digital twin. And actually, uh, we can apply it to different scenarios because I'm showing here, it's not only that the digital twin is able to uh, characterize just uh, a product, like you can see here in the, in the, in the, at the bottom of the, of the picture, it can characterize a process or it can characterize a whole system. Okay, so you see that the, the level of complexity of digital twin is open. It open uh, to everything we want, we want or we need to put on it. Okay. Of course, uh, I have, as so far I have shown you only examples of uh, digital things working on, 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 on pictures from the real world cases. But uh, we can't work in the digital twin area unless we have some architectures that are backing up our designs. And the problem of the digital things is so new technology that we don't have one unique architecture, maybe in a few years we have only one, so that everyone can work with the same architecture. Probably not, I don't know, but so, so far we have several architectures. 
This is an example of, of one architecture uh, that is, can be found in the, in the literature. I, I have selected three of them because I think they are especially interesting. Okay. And um, you can see here that the, the term layer starts to, to be shown. And actually, the complexity of a digital twin can be so high that uh, um, the specialists in the area uh, have decided that all this area of digital thing of this world need to be uh, separated into layers to have a more specific and precise studies of each layer to see what's, what has hap is happening in each of the layers. Uh, this is not new for people like, like me who work in the cybersecurity area or in the communication area. We are used uh, for, the, for example, to TCP IP uh, layers and the protocol stack. Uh, and how, from the students of security area, we study the security problems in each of these layers, okay, separately. So we have this uh, architecture. We also have this other architecture. We still have layers there, although they are not called layers, okay? But we can see still the separation of these models. And the last one I want to show you is this one. And this one is, is very recent. This one is uh, already on a, on a standard. It's the ISO 23247. Uh, it's very, very recent. Um, for some time has been a draft, but now it has been published uh, uh, officially. And still you can see there um, uh, the layers. Uh, because it's so recent uh, standard architecture, it has not been adopted uh, widely. Probably would be uh, after some years, but not for, not for the moment. When we started working on, on uh, um, uh, the study of the cybersecurity issues in, in the digital twin, this uh, architecture was not published. Yet. Okay, but so we had to figure out what to, uh, what architecture to take into into account. We show you later. But uh, fortunately for us, the architecture we conceive is not that far from the architecture that it has been standardized. So I, I just want to uh, point out that the results the results of our research are uh, um, uh, valid in the sense that the architecture we, we thought about and the one that was uh, uh, standardized later are quite, quite similar. But in any case, so far I have not mentioned what are the problems about cybersecurity. Why cybersecurity is an issue in digital twins? Well, it's an issue because uh, these, as you could see in the uh, uh, success stories and the real world scenarios, um, Digital twin is mostly used in uh, in the in critical uh, systems. So uh, critical systems, as you may know, are especially interesting for attackers, okay, because of the level of damage that they can that they can create. And apart from that, another important issue that probably has not been explored uh, that much so far is that the digital twins have in, internally intellectual property. Why? Because we may have in a, in, a, in a factory, in an industry, a robot, okay? And the design of the robot may be secret. It will be, uh, uh, it will be um, a subject of uh, intellectual property. But when we want to have the digital twin, and we want the digital twin to have a specific simulation of that robot, we have to put all the knowledge of, all the, all the design of the robot inside the digital twin. So we put it in the digital space. Okay, so we are taking the intellectual property from, let's say, from the more hardware area to the digital area. And being digital, it's easier to be intercepted or stolen by uh, the hackers. So this is the second reason why digital print has a special interest for attackers. They may not be able to get information about the intellectual property from the, let's say, more physical or hardware part, but they can steal it from, from the digital part, from the digital space, okay? Uh, so that, that's why that's what makes the the cyber security issue double interest uh, in the area of digital, of digital things. So when we observe that, we started to think, okay, so what are what are the the questions that we need to think about in the cyber security, cyber security area uh, from the perspective of digital things? So what are the type of threats and Consequent attacks that, that uh, can be produced, and where in the whole system can be, be uh, produced. What types of risks are there? What are the effects on the physical world from these attacks, for example, in the digital, in the digital world? What is the impact on the organization who is owning 
this digital print system. So these are things that we started to think about, okay? Uh, and, and then, because we have studied already the, all the, all the um, non-security issues of the digital prints, we realized that in order to research in the, uh, everything related to cyber security, you know, we have to take into account two basic aspects that up to that moment were not much uh, developed by the research community, just because it's a very new, uh, very new topic. The first of them is regarding the functional layers. That's why I mentioned before the layers, I, put, uh, I wanted to put your special attention in the layers of architecture, okay? Uh, we realized that it was necessary to study the cybersecurity issues per layer and see what is the impact of attacking one layer to other layers of the of the of architecture. Um, of course, it's also important because, uh, as we will see later, in each of these layers we have different technologies, and the technologies by themselves are prone to risk from the security point of view. Okay. And the second thing that is important is the operational requirements. Um, why the operational requirements is important in the DTs? Because we need to understand, uh, okay, let's put it in this way. What, what we really want is that the digital twin works perfectly so that there is a good connection in between the physical space and the digital space through the communication space. And that the digital space can discover things or map functions or whatever and provide feedback to the physical space so that the physical space reconfigure itself and start behaving in a different way. Uh, so if our last goal or, a, or a, the main end is that the um, digital twin is working correctly, we need to understand what are the requirements for working correctly and how each of those requirements can be affected by different types of uh, um, threats or attacks, okay? Uh, I will try to put you an example of the, the understanding better. Let's suppose I have a dog and the dog is um, uh, beaten or attacked by an insect. It may happen that it does not affect the, the dog at all. But if the same insect bites me, it may, it may affect me, me or any human body. Okay, because we have different features, different characteristics, the dogs and the patients. So this is exactly what we, we, we try to see. Okay, what are the features? What are the requirements, the pressure requirements? What do they need the digital team to work? And what could the attacker do to stop, uh, uh, to prevent uh, working it correctly? So let's let's study the, the problem from the side of the attacker. This needs to uh, have, uh, this needs uh, or, or drove us to uh, study with some detail the operational requirement. Okay, to see how to prevent that the uh, digital team uh, working correctly. So let's start with the, with the functional layers. So as I mentioned before, we had not a specific architecture where to look for, there were many. The standard one was not uh, uh, public yet. So we started to envision our own architecture uh, from, from, the, from the knowledge that we have of others that were published. So we, a suddenly defining layer one that is data dissemination and acquisition. This is the more related to the or the more close to the physical space. And this is what we have for the for the layer one. You can see we have there the sensors, the cameras, the actuators. Okay. Then we have a second layer that, that related to data management and synchronization that is more devoted to the connection of the physical and digital spaces. And this is the kind of uh, uh, modules that you have in that in that layer related to event and management of event, the management of the uh, input output, the uh, synchronization, etc. Then we have a third layer that is related to the data modeling and the additional services. Okay, so we are going up and up in the in the in the uh, in the layers. This is what we find. Sorry. Uh, yeah. This is layer three. Okay. So that's, that's what we find in, say, the, the layer three. We have the virtual sensors, the virtual actuators, actuators the models, etc. And we have finally a layer four that is for data visualization. Uh, it's where we have uh, inside the digital space everything related to the human machine interface. So, all together is let me show you here this is structure. 
So this is the four layer structure we have been working with, but it's not much different from the other um, the other uh, structure, the other architectures of layers. But still, we have considered this part here. I don't know if you will see it correctly. This security, because uh, actually this is like more a conclusion uh, after our work. It's we have the security is orthogonal to all the layers. This is what precisely what I mentioned. Okay, so. Let's go back a couple of, of uh, yes, right there. So in summary, with all these layers, what we have is that the, the difference between them is the level in the processing of the data, okay? And also the technology is internally involved. So the layer one is the one that uh, more related to real world assets, to the devices, and the layers two and four are uh, more related to the logic and the models. So this is related to the, the um, um, layers. And now let's go into the operational requirements at the second important point to consider. So uh, when we started working on the operational requirements, uh, surprisingly for us, there have not been much effort in, in the scientific community working on digital twin in trying to group the different operational requirements and the sub requirements. So we started to, to uh, read all papers uh, that had some um, information about the requirements and to, we made the way of grouping all these requirements that were not, it was something not done before. And this is the um, classification of requirements that we have. You can see there, uh, I think they are self explained by the name, the performance, interoperability, maintenance, reliability, etc. Okay, you can see there are these, uh, um, the main requirements and the sub requirements related to each of them. So these this, uh, sub-requirements and the requirements is what we had to study to see what was the impact of the, uh, of the um, threats into the normal operation of the digital things. And actually, I, will, I would like to show you an example. In this, in this example, you can see how, for example, there is a lack of integrity of data or an ability of data. We have an, an ability of data. This produces a desynchronization of services, synchronization in terms of operational requirements. Okay, and then that goes into the uh, effects to the accuracy and the consistency who are also operational requirements. And this leads to uh, invalid decisions on the digital space. So uh, whatever information is sent to the physical space in order to readapt the behavior and the functioning of the uh, physical space would be wrong if, if the uh, integrity of the data or the availability of, of the data is a problem. And this is not related to security, but the same thing can be applied for security issues. If there is someone who manipulates the data of the sensors, or that if there is a denial of service attack, this will also affect the synchronization as an operational, operational requirement and the accuracy and the uh, consistency of the representation. And the output, the final outcome of the digital tree will be an invalid visualization of the uh, decisions, okay? So that's why, the, uh, as you see, there is like the cascade effect in the, in the requirements because they are uh, related to each other. Uh, this is what we wanted to study, not only from the security point of view, like this, this example, but also to the, let's say, non-security point of view, which is the previous example. Uh, you can see there, uh, coming back to this, to this picture, that one of the operational requirements is related to security itself. It's a safeguarding, the last one. Well, we have to take into account security and privacy. So uh, it was not defined by, by, by us. It was defined by others who already say security uh, and privacy are uh, intrinsic operational requirements for, for the digital tools. In what sense? Well, uh, in the sense that uh, the DPs are of critical nature, that they, a big part of digital thing, all the digital space is based on uh, software components, and we know that software components as uh, tended to, to have uh, bugs, but also there is a problem that when we try to provide security solutions, either from hardware or software, we are, we are, we are increasing the complexity of the system itself. So this one, one, one part. The other part is what I mentioned before, the intellectual property copies. There is uh, a lot of uh, information, intellectual property or industrial secrets, uh, from the more physical world that comes to the digital space, the digital world. Uh, like all, all this um, uh, that you see there, you can copy stuff from the most of the operational technologies uh, operation, 
uh, the proprietary and legacy protocols, etc. etc. So all this work we have to to uh, somehow approach uh, in order to solve from the security point of view. Okay, so once that we studied the functional layers and the potential and the potential requirement and see what effect could they, they could have on the on the security issues, then we went directly to say on which are the survival security threats. We have not we have not identified yet what are the survival security threats. So as we have mentioned before, we we expected to have threats from the physical perspective, from the physical space, but also from the digital perspective. And this is what took us to uh, establish the and uh, organize and classify the threats uh, per layer, as mentioned before. Um, let me go here. Yeah, yeah that will be back later. So we started to identify the R2 group, the attacks per layer. So we can find in layer four everything, all the attacks related to human machine interface. But in layers two and three, we can find attacks that we group under the computing infrastructure type, visualization system type, and computing techniques types. And then in layer, in layer one, we have the, uh, the, the attacks related to cyber physical system and industrial internet of things. So more precisely, we go to the other one. So we have here the attacks identified. I don't know if the, if the, if the font is too small, but uh, you don't need to read all of the text, you can find them in the paper, but it's just to show you what is the spectrum of different attacks that we can find in layer one. Okay. Uh, next one, you can find the spectrum of all the different attacks in layers two and three. You see, there is a, we have grouped them in three different types. We have plenty of them. Some of the attacks are the similar, okay, they have different layers. This is somewhat attack can happen in different layers. And um, finally, you have in layer four, um, uh, this is a very top uh, level close to the, to the user, they are uh, less, less attacks. So this is, this, all these attacks, all this taxonomy of attacks is not something that we have invented, it's something that we have been discovering in the different papers that we have been reading. Uh, we have tried to organize them. Uh, in some uh, real world uh, scenario success stories, we mentioned before, they were talking about some um, attacks, but they were not able to explain what kind of, of attacks they were receiving because they were not experts. So we, we tried to infer that information and categorize also. Um, and uh, with this uh, categorization of, of, uh, of attacks, we realized that, uh, as I mentioned before, there is a kind of cascading effect. For example, we can start an attack from uh, layer one. You see there, there is an adversary that penetrates in the in the layer one with a malware installed on the, any um, um, device, a sensor or a PLC or whatever. So once that they are inside, they compromise the location because they, they, they enter into the system, the whole system of the, of, the, of the industry, and then they try to locate the specific position or location of the digital print. Uh, then they compromise the digital twin. The attackers then learn about uh, the main resources of the, of the system, and the attacker can get back again to the physical uh, space with incorrect or fake instructions or misconfiguration. Okay? And this, in the same way, we can have attacks starting at level two and four that go back to level one. So, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, uh, intend that you understand everything right now, just to get the idea of the interconnection and the relation, interrelation of the different layers when we talk about attacks. But probably it will be, get uh, easier if we go back, if we, if we go to this, to this slide. This slide is the complete set of all the security threats that we found confronted with operational requirements, okay? To check to which operational requirements, which operational requirements are affected by each of those threats. It, was, it, was, it took us a long time to, to complete this, this table, but we took some conclusions. For example, what are the attacks that affect, affect more to the operational requirements? Well, those that are related to uh, rock uh, uh, devices 
or man in the middle of that. For those of you who are a little bit familiar with security, you are I'm sure you uh, understand um, uh, or you want to know about these uh, typical attacks in any network. So these are especially problematic uh, in digital print. It's not the same for other computing systems, but specifically in digital twins, and what we have discovered is that these two types of attacks are the ones who have more effect on the, on the functioning of the digital uh, twin because they affect more to the, oper to the operational requirements. In the second term, uh, those that are related to software, okay, because they affect more on the, on the upper layers, not in the, on, the, on the physical layer. And finally, the, those are related to uh, distributed denial of service attacks. And the, actually, the, the uh, effect of this type of attack will depend on um, um, how, the, how the digital twin is um, designed, if it's uh, oriented to a centralized or decentralized or distributed solution. Okay? So it's not only. Um, what we have here uh, in terms of uh, what is the effect uh, of the, of the uh, different attacks on the operational requirements, but it's also to know which are the operational requirements that are more typically affected in general by security issues. And you can see there that those requirements that are more related to the uh, consistency of the data are the most um, Fragile, the most uh, affected by any attack, as you can see there in the in the in the table. Okay. Uh, moreover, um, we took a look to the to the layers, and we realized that it is the layer one where we can that, that is most as most as more, more at risk among the four layers. Uh, I have tried to represent it with this with this column. So. Um, um, among all the all the um, uh, uh, attacks, the ones that are grouped there in the red line, so we have the software attacks, privilege escalation, the rap uh, devices, digital uh, tampering, etc. Uh, these kind of attacks are especially affecting the layer one. So we, this is something we can, as what we didn't expect. We thought that the major security problems would be on the digital space. But uh, we demonstrated that it's not. It's on the physical space. It's something that was unexpected to us. Okay, and we appreciate it several times. We are not wrong. <laughs> it's the physical space that, that the one that where we can expect more problems. Uh, so we started to try to answer the question of digital things mean double security. That was the title of the of the presentation. It doesn't mean uh, we have not measured yet if it's double. If it's three times, if it's 1.5 times, we don't know. But we, what we have realized is that uh, we have more problems than for any other computing system because it's a, a special kind of computing system uh, because it, it takes into account both both worlds and the communication is also is also problems. But what we haven't discovered is that there are no new security problems. The security problems that we need to solve are the same that have been studied in the security community for years. Obviously, we have to adapt the solution that we have found during the last years to the specific scenario of digital things. Okay, so I don't have a, a, an answer for the question of double security, but what we are sure is that what is necessary is to put some more effort in solving those problems. And actually, we wanted to evolve uh, our research to check how to solve in the digital between area, each of the of those uh, security attacks that we have there, but we are not the time. So we uh, we were happy to at least explore the direction of the approaches of service security that can help solving the DD uh, uh, issues related to service security. And actually, we try to classify those approaches, and we find. That we have some approaches that are uh, that have strong technical nature. Uh, for those, sorry, if you are not familiar with security, uh, but those uh, are, let's say, 
kind of security services or meta services, which consider meta services, is the hardware uh, and software security, the hardening of digital key infrastructure, and the clapping, identification of the authorization, uh, privacy, trust management, etc. So these are the tools, let's say the tools, services, meta services, tools, whatever, the security tools that we have been managing during years, also in the industrial sector. Okay, but we have tried to bring them to the digital twin area. But at the same time, we could not, uh, we could not um, uh, lose the perspective that there are also other um, security solutions that are more related to security management and procedures. So it's not only technical what we need. We need also solutions uh, more from the policy point of view, or the normative point of view of how uh, the companies and the industry uh, work. Okay. And then uh, what we um, have done is to, what I included here in the, in the presentation and also in the, um, in the paper is uh, the recommendations that we are proposing, uh, we are giving to the cybersecurity community who wants to start in the digital twin area from where to start working according if they like to work more on the hardware area or on the policy area or on the software area. Okay, so for hardware and software security, uh, the research should go in the direction. These are, these, these are the conclusions from all the previous tables that you, that you saw. Okay, so the research should go more uh, to ensure, for example, the root of trust through um, uh, trust modules or, uh, or the TE. Uh, provide secure programming, the security by design that is, has been lost for years and that is not really. Um, uh, you can see in the papers, but the companies and the private uh, industry is not really taking much care of it. Uh, the the, the um, security pattern design, uh, verification of, of uh, the process and the testing. This is the hardware as our security. So regarding the hardening of the DP infrastructures, also some uh, recommendations like establish first line of defense, uh, limit the access of the external entities and have degree of trust, in, in, uh, establish degree of trust, uh, protect the digital threat that is the, the communication space, and so I don't want to take the board. Uh, so that's the same for one and again uh, for each of those uh, tools, not a service that we want to, to, to call it or services. What are uh, the steps ahead that we have to uh, work in in order to reach a most the security, security that means it's a mostly because you know uh, there's nothing 100% secure. Okay, so the same thing from response and recovery, the event management information sharing this is very important. The event management is extremely important in digital twins uh, area. Uh, the same for trust management, uh, for the privacy issues. Okay, all, all those recommendations is uh, where we are. Um, challenging the new uh, researchers to focus in order to, to help in this uh, security community uh, to solve the problems of uh, digital twin security. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, those are more related to policy, the governance and security management. It's necessary to establish security control, so to, to provide dynamic risk management um, and in the, in the, to be able to trace uh, and audit whatever is happening. And something important is the use of uh, uh, DLTs, technology, technology as a blockchain, in order to uh, enhance the traceability of events in digital. Okay. And finally, also, we, we should not uh, forget is the training uh, and, the, and the human aspects. Uh, we will fail completely if we just provide technical solutions and we don't train the operators of the uh, industrial systems to perform certain kind of uh, behaviors, uh, security related behaviors, okay? To conclude, okay, that will go uh, quick. Uh, well, I have tried to show you, uh, firstly, for those of, of you who don't know the concept of, the, of digital thing, what it is and what it's not. Uh, what is the complexity of the different designs that we have uh, regarding the uh, different architecture that we can find in the literature or in any of the success stories so far in the industry. Uh, and how we need to take very much into account, this is what I tried to demonstrate with the table at the end, how we have 
to take into account the layers and the technologies of each of the layers plus the operational requirements in order to try to approach how to solve the security problem okay and how they are interconnected and interrelated as i show i show there uh but still uh, the conclusion is uh, there is still a, a, a need to uh, make a bigger effort in the research because there is very for those of you who, are, who, who may want to join the uh, security community and want to find a new a niche uh, of, of of research uh security in other things is still very very open as i have seen as we have seen there with all those recommendations of research aid lines to start um in order to, to provide uh, what we really want that is to have not double insecurity but have no insecurity or most no insecurity in the digital okay and that's all thank you very much for your uh, for your attention and um, again my my uh, uh thank you for the organization uh to organize it for inviting me to be here thank you Thank you. 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 In the medical field of digital means for humans, because they started because there are already many startup companies, yeah. and you know in the past for the folder, now they switch to digital means, and that would be very very push. Uh, we we uh, uh, found I think one paper, one article uh, about this uh, digital means of a human. Uh, we don't want to go into that. <laughs> Maybe there are some ethical issues there. But, but, but uh, I'm very sure that uh, try to, uh, from the, my opinion, from the cyber security point of view, uh, trying to find or to design the interview of the human body would be much, much more complex than any natural system we can find. So if we have not been able to solve the security problems for the digital things of the uh, Industry, let's say, or industry uh, systems, we will be less able to solve them to want to have a digital team of a human body. That's, that's for sure. And, and there is something that uh, comes to my mind is uh, I, I was talking before, okay, if we have a robot in the physical space and the robot is working in some such way, uh, it's a special design by the company and it's the Somehow, this kind of intellectual property of how the robot works, and we want to take it to the digital world. Okay, this is like taking the brain of the robot to the digital space. How can we do that with the human brain? I'm not sure it can be done, but uh, probably we'll not see. <laughs> Any question there? Any question there? Okay. Thank you. Uh, your approach to this digital uh, swing seems to be very oriented to the industry and the web complete and efficiency. I'm curious for, for different applications. Uh, if you take this conference, for example, I can give you a number of different and you can have a push it online. So I mean, how you approach uh, adapting to different uh, contexts? Uh, again, for this conference, security is not an issue, and it's probably going to so much so much there. So, so I mean, how flexible, how, 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 how adaptable the system to be different from other small yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. 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 The fact why we have focused on the industry is because uh, Christina and myself are working part of our research is uh, the industry of four uh, four point zero now I point zero about industry point zero uh, so we have a lot of experience on the security issues in industrial systems but then the digital things came something like new that's why we thought okay 
I will cut some noise and you can see how what happens with that. We have a total of various types of epidemics that are not in that. However, uh, from a point of view, from the security point of view, okay, because I'm an uh, expert in uh, security, but not in other uh, topics. Uh, even if you have a less complex scenario, you will still have layers, probably less complex layers with less uh, components, with less models, but still layers. Because from the security, from the security point of view, it's always very important. We have to talk about from for years ago since we started uh, studying the security study. It's very important to try to isolate the, uh, the, the attacks and the problems in each of the layers. But then, after see how these attacks are integrated, they produce a cascade. But first, we have to study this thing. Separately. So, my understanding that the discussion we will view out of the industrial sector are the industrial problems, and uh, we still have to study layer by layer, layer, by layer but uh, more simple layers than the ones that we have seen here are very complex. The layers are very complex because we are working with very complex systems that are the computers. They are more than they are not fully still smart. We have another layer which is the mental specific application. So, which means the system still we can learn from application of our failure of our lab circumstances. So, the system will become that would be probably an adaptive architecture.
la verdad que no no me da cuenta de la esta pregunta es la primera vez que la hago. De hecho, la he terminado a las 11 y cuarto de la mañana. <risa> es que está, se basa en un, en un artículo que hemos publicado hace un mes. Sí, eso es pero pero uh, nunca la hemos llevado a la presentación. O sea, a Nike. No tenemos ningún orden como nuevo. Entonces, no tenemos ni los tiempos. Gracias, gracias. Pero es que ha hecho mucha seguridad y yo no sé más que se me queda aquí. Pero bueno, para eso he intentado meter cosas de no de seguridad al principio para. No, la verdad es que el formato está bastante bien. Eh, intentando poner mucho texto, mucho dibujo, mucho visual, para que... Pero, eh, eh, hay un principio que lo va a... Que lo...